Yeah, perfect. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my Lunch and Learn today with Republic Work. Uh, today, I'll be sharing my best practices when it comes to launching a podcast with no experience and a very limited budget. Uh, I did this myself uh, from my college bedroom about a year ago. Um, so um, looking forward today to kind of taking you through what I've learned along the way. Um, so I'll be discussing four topics essentially today, uh, planning and production, recording and editing, uh, hosting services, and then branding and promotion. Um, if you wouldn't mind keeping questions uh, until after each topic, um, just for just be conscious of time and things, um, I'll allow for questions, their uh, pop-up will come up. Um, and if there's anything I can't answer today, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or shoot me a DM on Instagram afterwards. Um, but I'll be sharing all my details at the end. So uh, feel free to catch up with me. Uh, first up, my name is Jack Foley. I'm a recent CAT or now MTU graduate, uh, having studied marketing for the past four years. In September 2020, I launched my first podcast, the A to B podcast, which sees me interviewing an array of industry professionals and basically how they got from A to B in their careers. Uh, in May 2020, I joined Vida as co-founder and chief marketing officer, uh, and Vida is basically an accelerated talent acquisition platform. Uh, we've recently been accepted into the team or Catalyst, which is housed here in Republic of Work. Uh, speaking of Republic of Work also, uh, they've kindly offered a 10% discount to those of you today uh, wishing to use their podcast space. Um, so I'm sure if you uh, reach out to Angie afterwards uh, or even shoot me a text, and I'd be more than happy to put you in touch with the guys um, and you can start your own podcasting journey inside a very fancy studio. Um, so everyone has to start somewhere. Um, and my podcast journey began when I first started researching how to produce a podcast for an internship. Now, the company I was working for at the time didn't launch the podcast in the end. So I talked to hell with it and I went off and made my own podcast. I'm naturally a curious individual and I love storytelling. So the guest style podcast suited, suited me perfectly. Um, you can see down bottom right, May 31st, 2020 is when I first started uh, proper research for the podcast. Um, and, you know, it's fairly serious and there's a Google Drive folder in the works. So, um, yeah, you just got to start somewhere. When people ask me, where do I start? It's like literally start planning. Um, since then, um, I've had over 3,000 downloads. I'm halfway through my second season. Um, so far, I've interviewed people from the likes of Spotify, Marvel, LinkedIn, Ubisoft, Jim Plus Coffee, and a lot of other companies. So I've been really lucky um, and, and really grateful to have gotten to do that. Um, topic one is where it always begins, the planning and production before you even begin recording. Um, when you're starting out this, uh, I would say it depends whether your podcast is personal or a business project. Now, the A to B podcast for me was more of a personal project than a business one. I don't rigorously plan every episode, nor do I expect a return for what I put out there. The odd buy me a coffee is nice, but it's not the end goal. Um, when it comes to topic ideation for personal podcasts, you want to follow two rules. The topic is stay niche so you can stay consistent in your planning and production, but also so that the listener knows what to expect each time. And that's the start of building a community of listeners who return for each episode. They know what they're getting. Now, in saying that the topic should be niche, there should also be longevity in the subject itself. So ask yourself, how many episodes can I plan in my head right now? Is it six, maybe eight? Make a list. Maybe there's 13 episodes in your head. So you can start with one season and then maybe in the second season, you could have another six or seven episodes. It's all about what time you're willing and most importantly, able to give to the podcast. Um, an example when it comes to topics, especially with my own A to B podcast, here we have Brendan Canty, a Cork filmmaker who's worked at Hosier, Jane Renane, who's a Cork entrepreneur, founder of Televest, and Garod Buckley, who was once the mayor of Bandon and is now a group marketing manager at LinkedIn. Other than the fact that they're all from Cork, they also have an A to B story. They've made mistakes and they've learned from them just like everyone else. Um, and if you can stay consistent in that storytelling, um, you know, that's really how it works. Uh, so when it comes to choosing a topic for your business podcast, got to think of your objective. Is it maybe inbound sales or is it just to update your community? Regardless, keep your audience in mind when planning entirely. Each topic, each episode, ask yourself, who is this for? Who is going to be listening to this episode? What is the point I'm trying to get across? Am I going to solve a problem or am I going to give value to the listener? Always be wary of that. It could take one bad episode where you're just talking pure muck for an hour and people might not come back to you. So you just have to be careful. Um, 
An episode I really like uh, is Click by uh, Mark Lavin. Um, They're really smart in the way they break down each episode into topics. Um, So every kind of aspect of digital marketing they'll talk about. But most recently, um, where it's like subjects that Mark might not know about, for example, cryptocurrency um, and whiskey, of all things, he recently had Ernest Cantillon on to talk about how that works. So... I guess the kind of smart thing here is you don't have to do all the heavy lifting yourself. Um, Not every episode has to be yourself. It depends if you're going to go for a guest format or if it's just going to be you talking to your, I suppose, community. Um, But the odd time you can bring in another expert or you can bring in someone from a different background to, I guess, in one way, it is interesting to have another person on, but also take the workload off yourself because if you're planning every single episode and you're you're taking it on entirely by yourself, it, it can be draining. Um, so having guests on is nice um, choosing a name for your podcast I would say straight up for a personal project try and keep it short catchy and memorable now if you just look up the first two letters or uh, if you try and keep it relevant to the topic you're discussing um, with the A to B podcast some people think I just looked up the first two letters in the outfit ran with that um, but of course it's the A to B journey for professionals um, you should consider your personal brand where you can try and include that in the podcast um, and brainstorm the ideas, the names as well. Come up with two to three names and search platforms and search social media. Whether it's personal or whether it's business, you've got to try and think of word of mouth and online searchability and discovery. Okay. So, you know, have some fun. You're producing a show. It's not Hollywood, but treat it like it's a bit of showbiz. So you can come up with some really nice names. Um, two companies I really love and what they do with podcasting are Privy and Drift. To begin with, uh, Privy, uh, they're an e-commerce uh, company in uh, New York, um, but they've got the e-commerce marketing show, and then they later launched the e-commerce marketing school. The titles and the branding are consistent, but you know what to expect from each show. So e-commerce marketing school is more for the beginners, people who don't really know what they're doing, whether they're using Shopify or uh, another platform. And then the e-commerce marketing show is for people who are a bit more advanced. So I, I really didn't want to say the word in today's session, but basically, if you've got a good topic, milk it, you know, try and come up with different uh, variations, uh, you know, maybe if it's uh, reproducing it on YouTube and then on Instagram, whatever that might be. Um, when it comes to the show, have fun, play around with us. Um, another company I love is Drift. Now, they want uh, one or maybe even four steps further and they have six podcasts. Each show is produced by their sweet C-suite and senior staff from CMO conversations to growth to building and operations and then seeking wisdom is kind of similar to my own podcast where they just have guests on they talk about business and then the american dream is about uh, underrepresented people in tech in america so i'm not sure what their numbers are like i'm not too sure what the return on having six podcasts for a company is um they're well known in america but i guess people buy from people um and even in b2b it's the same so um Playing around with personality um, works. Um, When it comes to choosing a time for the podcast, I would say on personal podcasts, it depends. I mean, how long should a book be? Um, My episodes range from 40 minutes to an hour and a half. But given the topic of taking people through their A to B journeys, it's something you can't really rush. Um, So personal podcasts, as long as it's enjoyable, as long as people are actually enjoying it, they're going to listen. Um, When it's come to a business podcast, though, I would say it's different. Uh, if it's topic based you want to keep it to the point so your episodes should be typically 15 to 30 minutes long but if you're having an interview with someone or a chat with an expert you're best off keeping it below 45 minutes now the reason for that is being today people are going to listen to your podcast during three main stages they're going to be eating they're going to be exercising they're going to be commuting Now, if you've got a 45 minute long uh, episode, they might listen to it on the drive to work. They might listen to it on the drive back. Now, they might be going for a run. Um, I know personally for myself, I'll often listen to a podcast that could be an hour and a half long and it'll take me three days to get through it. But if it's a good show, I'll keep going back to it. Uh, I've heard the same about my own podcast. Uh, You know, Stephen Ryan listens to it while he does the shopping and on the drive home. So um, it's mostly when people are able to multitask, that's when they'll tune in. Um, right now, anyway, guys, with planning and production out of the way, um, I will ask, uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, if not, I can take questions towards the end. And like I said, you're more than welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn or shoot me a text on Instagram. But I'm open to any questions on planning and production right now. 
Okay, perfect. I'm going to move on. So guys, um, the next topic is recording and editing. So your plan is in place. You know what you want to talk about, but how are you going to do it? And straight up uh, is the recording equipment. You're going to need a microphone or at least kind of. Uh, I would argue the purchase you make for your podcast is a good mic, but no more than 100 euros. Uh, mics are easily available today, um, are readily available. Uh, podcasting kind of blew up during the uh, beginning of the pandemic um, because everyone wanted to start a, a podcast and, and there was no microphones left. Um, but uh, even today, like you've got two options. You know, you could spend 75 on a good mic or if you have official like Apple earphones, plug them into your laptop. Uh, most of my guests, well, all of my guests don't have a microphone because, uh, and I've seen companies in America sending their guests out a microphone um, you don't even need to do that either. Uh, a good pair of earphones will work. And the reason I'm saying that is because I use a software to record called Zincaster, which I'm going to show right now. Um, but just to tie things up on the recording equipment, um, prices, there's a lot out there, guys. You don't need to spend the load. Um, 75 euros. And literally, I would say that's like the one off purchase you need for the podcasting. Everything else is essentially free. Um, and that's what moves me on to Zincaster. Um, so to record your advice or perhaps up to five guests using Caster, it was recommended to me by uh, Jonathan Healy from Healy Communications. And I've seen a lot of companies putting out big budget podcasts. Um, and the minute the audio isn't right, I tend to, it's difficult for me to listen. Now there's an argument there as well. If the chat, if the interview in itself is good quality, people can forget about um, the audio quality, but sometimes if it's really bad, if it's like no microphone and if they're using Zoom along video, they're recording MP4 and then they're just plugging that into a podcast host, that audio tends to be very poor. Um, and one of the reasons I recommend Zincaster is not only is it 100% free, but it's also super easy to use. So easy, I'm actually going to run uh, through it uh, quickly here. Um, on your main dashboard, you've got the create new episode. You click that. You put in your name uh, or the episode title, you decide if you're going to go audio only, visual and audio at the same time, or perhaps you want the visual, but just to record your audio. Uh, I really love Zincaster and the way it works. Super easy. So you hit record, it starts recording. You stop recording. I did it here after 19 seconds as this is a test. And to the right, you can see that MP3 button. You click that, you download your MP3 file. Now. What I'm going to show next, not everyone has to use, but I think it is genuinely the best software out there for editing audio, um, and that is Audacity. Now, there's a small learning curve, but by God, the possibilities are endless, and it's 100% free. Now, you have to install it into your desktop, but it's used by musicians and producers all over the world. And that small learning curve, I managed to get over that within the first five minutes of watching, I think it was like the first five minutes of some YouTube tutorial um, and edit one of your two of your episodes using Audacity and you'll have it off by heart. Um, now, I'm going to take you through Audacity a small bit as well, uh, because when I first opened it on my desktop, I was very, very confused, but there's genuinely no need to be. Um, now, again, I hadn't a clue when I opened this. But if you look at the top left, you're going to see like a load of buttons and there's literally 11 buttons that you're going to use when you're producing a podcast. Um, they're here highlighted. Um, I'm going to run through what each, I suppose, grid is. Um, there's 11 there. It's really, really simple. Um, now, I don't make music or, you know, beats or melodies, any of that kind of crack. I literally just edit the audio I already have, which makes Audacity perfect. So straight up, highlight specific segments that you need to silence or cut out entirely. Um, advanced volume controls. It took me a while to use this, uh, but it's extremely handy for opening and closing segments. So if you have your music coming in, you want to fade out your voice, or if you want to control the volume of tracks. Often I'll have a guest talking and an, uh, you know someone could start laughing. You need to bring down that voice or you know you need to bring down their separate track, but have your own track. You could be asking a question and you don't want the sound there to go, you might want to increase that. So Audacity allows you to do all of that. Um, and then the button down below with the two arrows, and that's the thing, I don't know any what any of these buttons are called. Uh, I've just learned off by heart, but that's where you like move your highlighted track from one spot to another. So if you want to drop the music into a track below, or if it's the case that, uh, you know, for me, for example, doing the A to B podcast, someone could start talking about a certain part of their career way too early. 
um, and I might have to just move it up a bit if I'm trying to keep some consistency in that kind of mode of storytelling, taking them through the years. Um, this is another one. Again, there's a lot of buttons here that I haven't even highlighted. If you look at the right, you can see some magnifying glasses. Not too sure. I assume you can zoom in with those. I just use the control button and my mouse and just zoom in uh, much easier. Um, but you've, you've got the usual pause, resume, stop. Um, that's your audio for putting out. So um, I, I, I was editing an episode recently um, and my guest said a joke um, and I was just like, no, I'm, I'm not going to put that out there. <laughs> so I, I just cut that entirely. Um, there's times as well where I have a guest talking to me and I'm, I'm a very chatty person. So I might start laughing at something they're saying, but I might laugh a bit too much um, and I have to just mute my voice entirely. And then other times you might actually be interviewing someone and they might have a bit of background noise. Um, I've had children walk in on episodes, you know, um, and you've got the guest apologizing. It's like, no, no, post-production, that can all be gotten rid of. So uh, it's a dangerous tool at the same time. Um, I, I know I, I've, I've gotten a few things uh, wrong in the podcast before. When I first started recording, I'd like say one or two things wrong. Um, and I, you know, I'd get like a date mixed up or I'd get a company mixed up and I'd just cut it out. Um, and I look, look back on it now, don't really worry about those things. Um, I think, again, people are people. They know when you make a mistake or, you know, you research the wrong thing. Um, and besides, the majority of people I have onto the podcast, you know, they don't have Wikipedia pages uh, on them. I could probably do a Wikipedia page on them after interviewing them, um, but I'm busy enough as it is. Um, so, yeah, really, guys, when it comes to recording and editing, like straight up, I would use Zincaster. It's free. Uh, it records the audio locally. And then I plug it into Audacity because it is it's the most, it, it, I, I mean, I guess anyone, especially with marketing, anyone can say it's the most powerful tool out there. But for me, it is. I mean, I, like, I'm literally editing with the same thing Dr. Dre himself edits with. I assume. I'm not too sure what he uses. But yeah, super quick and handy. Um, any questions at the moment, guys, on the recording and editing topic? Um, again, uh, feel free to connect with me afterwards. Um, I was a bit um, conscious of the time today. Yeah, so. um, I, I, have, I have a question, yeah. Um, yeah, perfect. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm aware about the groups that, you're, that you work with, but um, I don't know about re reduction, about the workplace and stuff. But, but would, would, would the, the editing and, and post-production and stuff and podcasts, it, 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 what, what about uh, community, radio, community radios like the regional hospital now or any, any other kind of community radio? Would you ever deal with kind of community radio stations in Cork? Uh, myself particularly, is it? Yeah. Um, no, I haven't before. Um, I've just produced a podcast uh, for, for myself, really. Um, okay. I've, I've helped some people set up podcasts, um, but uh, nothing with the community hospital uh, or, or, or community or radio. Or, community radio stations, yeah. No, no. Um, possibly something I might get into down the line. Um, but right now, it's, it's just been uh, kind of uh, podcasting from, uh, from my bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I suppose. Uh, do you have any particular question or? Um, but I just I'm 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 actually doing work at the moment, and um, it's just that um, I'm I'm getting into kind of radio stations myself and and work and stuff, and I'm 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 kind of interested in that kind of, and I I, I get help from we get we get help, we get help we get help with, with with the work that we put together and all that kind of thing, you know and. That's great. Then the more I'm kind of learning the technology, the better off I'll be. Kind of, you know, and, and it's different processes, you know. So, well, that's like, I think that's the worst thing is it's uh, everyone has their own way of doing it, um, yeah. you know. Um, and I don't think there's any right or wrong way, um, yeah. you know. There's, there's, you know, it's it's like every software out there. There's thousands of different versions, um. Yeah. But I, I myself, especially with Zincaster, um, you know, you can get an episode recorded or, you know, you start your first episode within maybe like four or five clicks. Um, mm. And then with Audacity, I'm sure there's, there might be easier ones out there. 
um, in, in terms of like more user friendly, um, I suppose, platforms for editing. Um, but just Audacity really, like you have too much control with Audacity. You can change as much as you want and you can, you can cut, you can move. Um, it, it is definitely the most powerful tool, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, if, if anyone else in the Lunch and Learn today has a suggestion on other software that they use, feel free to put it into the chat. Um, I, I actually yeah. can't see. Yeah. Can I ask a question now? Sorry, do you just record from Zoom into Audacity? Um, I know I know of some people who've recorded with Zoom using Audacity. Um, I wouldn't recommend Zoom uh, purely because from, from my experience, when I first started trying to do the podcast, uh, the audio quality in Zoom was just all over the place. You know, um, w- when I was listening back to it, it just sounded too muffled. Uh, it actually, it, it sounds what I might sound like right now. I, I don't know how perfect my audio quality is coming across, but if you if you listen to my own podcast, my voice is much, much clearer. Um, and I think I just paid 60 euros for my mic. So with, with Zencaster, like again, it's free. It's like Zoom. You don't need to download it onto your desktop. You go in, you click record. It takes your voice, your MP3 file, and then that MP3 you get from uh, Zencaster you put into Audacity. Um, I think the problem with Zoom is even if you turn your cameras off, the audio quality, it just doesn't pick it up as good as Zencaster does, in my opinion. So I would say if you are getting into the podcast space or if you already have a podcast right now, just get straight over to Zencaster. Um, I've, I haven't come across anything else that records the audio. Uh, but is, for- Zen- is Zencaster, how, I don't understand how you record the other person then, that's what I don't get. Yeah, I could probably still have explained that a bit better. Zencaster, what the, the unique thing about Zencaster is uh, Zoom will uh, Zoom will record both files. It'll record the one single file. So if there's seven people on it, it's going to record seven people talking. Whereas with Zencaster, let's say three people go on to um, the invite link for Zencaster. Let's say there's John, Jesus, John, Tim, and Mary. It'll record all three of the all three audio files separately. So it'll record. Okay. The, your mp3 their mp3 another person's mp3 so like it, like it's 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 tough to explain when it's it's so i suppose uh <laughs> no that's fantastic um, i agree yeah yeah, yeah. yeah no it, it's great because you can play around in with different files so if someone says something and they mess up you know like you full control of, of exactly where they, what they're saying where they are um and if someone's trying to ask a question and another person starts talking you know that's usually the way conversation goes you can just go into the separate files um, and cut and silence, or you can increase the volume then through Audacity. So I would always say like Zencaster, it records your audio like, you know, locally. So I would go with Zencaster um, and again, it's free. So I, I don't see why more people aren't using it. Yeah, that's it. Cheers, thanks. No worries. Yes, I have a question for you, if that's okay. Yeah, um, yeah perfect, of course. Yeah, so, well, two questions, actually. The first one is, um, I suppose, if we're recording in the field, so you're talking about digital recording, you're, you're in your place, I'm in my place. What if we're together, what kind of setup would you suggest for something like that? And my second question, I'm going to throw two of them at you, if that's okay, um, is your thoughts on video recording as well. So Zencaster offers a video recording. Do you think it's worthwhile doing a video edit of podcasts um, mm. in your experience? So there we go. Good. Um, okay, so I, I suppose on the on the video side of things, anyway, I would say it, it is worth it. Um, it just depends on your podcast. I know for me, I was interviewing a lot of, uh, I suppose, people who hadn't had their stories told, um, and I, I just feel from from the experience I've had, people get nervous when they're asked to be on video in the first place, um, and when they're asked to do a 20, 30 minute recording with their video on for the whole thing, um, if they haven't done that before you know from from the people i've spoken to you know you're constantly going to be like you know you're not going to be very comfortable if the camera's on you all the time um you know and especially if you don't have a great setup at home um whatever it might be and it depends who you're interviewing as well a lot of people i interviewed i interviewed in in the evenings towards the end of work um so like for me I, i had to be really chatty with them and try and kind of get them more energetic um but yeah it's just you have to be considerate of your guests when it comes to video um, but when it comes to the promotional side of things, um, like I, I wish I was doing more video myself. I, I just don't have time. Um, I suppose I do have the time, but it's just, 
I wouldn't like to be on camera myself, even doing this Zoom today for me, a, a small bit nervous. Um, but if people are up for being on camera, then with Zencaster, it's the exact same thing again. You can record both the MP3 and the MP4, which is your audio and visual. I know that video on social performs a lot better. Um, like I've been smart about it and I'll take you through later on how I've managed to still do video podcasting, but what I would actually have people being recorded in their rooms. And um, there's a way to get around it if you just want to be able to reproduce content across your socials and have the audio, but also have a visual that looks good. Um, but like, you know, you could definitely notice that people who put out podcasts and who have video, they do a lot better on social. Um, I think Content is King by uh, J.M. Muriel. It's actually filmed inside here. Those guys repurpose that for TikTok and Instagram Reels. Um, I see Budding Perspectives is another Irish podcast um, and they do everything through video. Like they put it all out on YouTube. They have the audio on the streaming links. So it, it, it performs better on social but I suppose you really, and I, I talk a lot of, uh, talk about it a lot in kind of branding promotion side of things. It really is your objective and what your goal, what your aim is to do with um, the podcast um, and, and what, how much time you're able to give it um, and consistency. You know, are you going to get those videos out two, three times a week, every week? Um, and will you nail, you know, are they going to come out uh, on a Tuesday at 10 p.m.? you know, or and can they come out every Tuesday at 10 p.m.? That's just what you have to consider. But video, definitely, as long as your guests are up for it, um, I would say run with it. Um, the editing side, I mean, post-production and putting that video into anything, it isn't really a big task, um, not with Headliner anyway. Um, and whereas I've shown Zincaster on Audacity, Headliner is my next favorite software that I use for post-promotion. Um, I've rambled a small bit on your second question, and as a result, I've forgotten your first question. Uh, I feel really bad. Um, would you mind uh, asking that first that, question? That's again? okay. I nearly forgot it myself, but thank you for that answer. Um, my first question was actually, if we were face-to-face, -face, um, what yeah. would be your suggested setup? Um, and I suppose that, that question would be kind of twofold. Like, if we were sitting across a table, it's probably easy enough. But if we were going to explore the topic of that podcast... What would you suggest um, a, a setup that would basically cover both? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Um, I guess like there's there's various ways you could do it. You could have two mics in the same room. Um, now, like I guess like you know like these little things here you know um i like this is what you'd be looking at um and then there's a technology around this where you have to have the mic so far away from someone they have to be muffled you have to make sure that like you know the audio for the different people speaking aren't coming across each other um i know straight up like and again, again like when it comes to videoing you in the same room as well do the podcast with someone um, your best setup would be probably two tripods. Uh, get uh, you know, if you have a camera, class. But again, low budget. You don't need an actual camera. Get your iPhone. Uh, get your guest with their iPhone or their Android. Put them up on two uh, tripods. Um, I will probably try connect with you afterwards. I'm forgetting the name of the microphone, but a snowball microphone. And um, they're made by uh, I believe the company is called Blue. Um, but they collect uh, audio from a 360 circle. So some microphones will just pick up what's directly in front of them. Um, to be honest, the majority of microphones do that. Whereas in recent times now, because of podcasting, um, that kind of microphone that picks up audio around the room um and i i'm not too sure like how far you have to be or how close you have to be to it and things um i'm very used to creating a podcast in in the lockdown uh, life um but there's definitely ways to do it um i again it depends on the physical setup what room you're in um if each person has their own table or if it's an office space um and again how many guests can you actually if it's with, with the one person so if it's a co-host um and that's pretty class you know have a nice background get a table maybe two mics if the two of you are willing to go in on it um but if you want to keep it on low budget just look up this uh, blue snowball mic that picks up audio at a 360 uh, angle um and yeah um i would assume then uh, yeah it would be just the one audio file so you download that as an mp3 pop it into um 
Audacity or whatever post-production uh, platform you're going to use. Um, and then with the video, um, I would say un unless you have a camera that's going to pick up uh, the two of you, um, if you're going to use like two iPhones, you could do that way. Or you could literally just have an iPhone on a tripod facing the two of you. It depends on the setup. Um, but there's definitely a way you could do it. Um, I think the most important thing about the iPhone thing is you don't need to go off and buy like, uh, you know, um, a camera for it on top of a mic and stuff. Um, again, podcasting on a budget. Um, but yeah, there's definitely a way to do that. Um, I would say though, I am interested uh, if that's a podcast you're doing yourself, do follow up with me on, on LinkedIn or Instagram. Um, I'd like to see if I can help with uh, the setup of a physical space. That might be uh, interesting. Yeah, perfect. I'll definitely get in touch with you. Thanks a million. No worries. Um, well, there's a couple of questions in the chat box as well if you want to oh, hear those. Wonderful. So, uh, I'll just ask, does Please. Audacity do a good job of filtering out background noise if recorded at a conference with people talking in the background? Um, it does. So it has a noise reduction feature where if there is like a solid, like let's say 10 seconds where like no one is talking into the mic, but there's background noise, you can actually highlight that background noise um, and then it'll automatically remove it from the entire track. Um, I've only had to do it once, um, but I'm more than happy to take someone through that over a Zoom call some evening. Um, so again, shoot me a text on Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna be—I might be inundated with text now after this, but I'm happy to help. Um, so yeah, give me a shout. Give me a shout. Maybe I'll have a look at that file for you. Um, but yeah, noise reduction should start that. There is a mute. So the other one is: How does Zencaster Audacity then export the edited files to Apple Podcasts or Lost Google Play? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm literally coming up to that now. I'm going to take you through hosting services. Um, so I might answer another question right now um, because I'm going to answer that in the next slide. Fab, and I think, let me just make sure I got them all. Yeah, cool. So it's all about mics there. Yeah, mics. Um, again, guys, I would say you don't need to go off and buy an expensive mic. Um, if it's a solo podcast for yourself, or you're going to be, uh, you know, is it just yourself? Then I would say 60, 70 euros on a good mic. Uh, go on to Amazon, maybe Toman, a dot e, or even one of the local stores uh, in town. Actually, you know what? The last time I went into town looking for a good mic, I went into about three music shops and none of them had what I was looking for. So try support local if you can. Um, but if not, the UK and the US markets, uh, that's just where like a lot of podcasting has been done right now. Um, but yeah, it's been no more than you know, 70, 80 euros on a mic. There's no need. Um, if there's more people in a room, um, that Blue Yeti, which picks up audio at 360 degree angle, I would recommend that. Um, and yeah, even like Apple earphones, if you have a MacBook, the Apple earphones record audio perfectly. I've had many guests wearing them while I interview them and their audio comes as, uh, across as clear as mine. Um, so, yeah. But again, anyone with questions on mics, shoot me a text. I'm happy to do a quick review um, and look through, I suppose, maybe even a budget with you um, and try and find you a mic. Um, you know, simple things. Um, so, yeah. Um, on to... Why won't this screen work for me? Yes, hosting services. Um, so this was whoever asked earlier on about how can I get my podcast onto Spotify and onto Apple and things. Um, you're going to be doing it through hosting services. So a podcast host is essentially a place to store and distribute your podcast's audio files. Uh, now, there's a lot of words here, like an RSS feed, which is basically a listing of all your episodes. And that RSS feed, you submit to podcast directories. Now, Spotify, Google, Apple, even though they're like, you know, huge platform streaming services, uh, like they're known as just directories to the hosts. You can't get onto them without a host. Um, a little graphic I made to explain how that works. <laughs> yeah, the graphic design is my passion. Uh, you got your episode, you have your MP3, you have it edited on Audacity, you then go on to a hosting service. Um, there's a load of hosting services out there. There's like Podbeam, there's Anchor FM, there is Buzzsprout, um, there is, there's thousands of them out there. Um, and you know, some are free, some aren't. Uh, some have things where it's like, oh, you can upload, but you have to pay 10 euros or we'll only keep your episodes up there for 90 days. Um, 
I would say, and basically again, the hosting service, you put it onto a hosting service, they distribute it to Spotify, Google, and uh, podcast, or Apple Podcasts. You never talk to someone from Spotify or you never talk to someone from Apple Podcasts. They just, you just don't eat it anymore. Um, hosting service is the middleman. Now, again, there are thousands out there, but just like I said, with, you know, like Zincaster, Audacity, Headliner, straight up Anchor. Uh, Anchor is a host. It was recently acquired by Spotify. Um, again, like I would like to consider myself tech savvy, um, but the one thing I love about uh, Anchor is it's just a really nice user interface. Uh, it's really, really easy to use. It's just, you know, click, drag, upload your episode. Here's your episode title, episode description. Uh, is there any explicit terms or, uh, you know, like bad words in this episode? You say yes or no, um, and you just put it out. Um, it takes about two minutes to go up. Um, I think the biggest question I had for myself when I was doing all this was like how long it would actually take for something to go up on, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Um, and I remember Googling it um, and Jesus, you know, when, when you don't know how to do something, I think Googling it is almost the worst thing you can do because Google, Google is telling me, oh, it'll take two weeks to go there. It'll take four days to go here. And everyone had like their own answer and I couldn't understand it. So like how it'll actually work with the hosting uh, is the first episode you ever put up um, onto that uh, host. When you, you know, you put in the episode, like title, the details, you put it out there. For a Spotify, I think it takes, I, I was told originally it would take a week. And when I actually went off and did it, it was up there within two days. So I, I'd say as long as you're not talking about anything dodgy or weird in your podcast, and as long as it's clean, you know, I mean, how, how weird can a podcast be or how upsetting can a podcast be for a Spotify or Apple to say no to it? Um, you know, so for me, I'd say it took about a day for the two of them to go up on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It took a week for it to go up on Google uh, Podcasts, um, but I, I don't know many people who use Google Podcasts, so I wouldn't really worry about that. Um, but again, the main thing about Anchor is it's 100% free um, as long as you don't make money, um, as long as you don't make money from advertisers, that is. But even to go near advertisers, you need to have a very like big, uh, you know, number of people, you know, big uh, audience numbers and stuff. Um, and then when it comes to the audience, it has really detailed insights and reports. So you can see where people are listening from. You can see what age they are. You can, you know, the demographics. Like, you can see is it what's the uh, ratio between men and women listening to it? You can even see what countries and what cities they're listening from. Um, so yeah, in terms of insights and reports, uh, to be honest, I mean. Yeah, sure. For a business podcast, for sales, it might be important to see how many people are listening from Dublin and Limerick and things. Um, but yeah, you just have to have your own objectives in place to really make sense of those reports um, and what I suppose KPIs matter to you. Um, does anyone have any questions on hosting services and how they work? Okay, um, just a bit uh, conscious to see if many any of those are going into the chat. So uh, if any questions do go into the chat, Angie, uh, I'd appreciate it if you could let me know. But I'm going to move on now to uh, my final topic, unless we have a question. We just have some things about mics. So I think, oh, oh. Todd just said, what hosting services do you think most people download from? Oh, um, hosting services or the actual streaming services themselves. Uh, people, the the listeners would download or would listen to it from, um, I think Spotify, for me anyway, it's like 86% of my listens come through Spotify. Um, I, I'm even trying to think now, like with Spotify, you don't even need Spotify premium to listen to podcasts. Um, you know, and, and like if you look at it like, people who have Android phones are straight away ruled out from Apple podcasts. Um, so like, yeah, and that's the thing, like when I first like launched the podcast, I put it onto Google and I put it onto Amazon Music. I put, I put it onto almost everything. Um, but sure, you know, almost everyone has Spotify on their phone. And if not, um, they have Apple Podcasts and maybe they have SoundCloud. Um, at the end of the day, if it's a podcast that might have a very like tough uh, reach, if, if you know your kind of audience aren't going to have these apps, then you could always put it out onto YouTube. Um, or you could just literally keep repurposing the content, making video or those video graphics that I'll show you later on and have those on social. Um, but yeah, Spotify is like number one um, from, from my numbers alone. Um, and I would say like my, my listeners kind of range from all over Ireland because of the people I interview. So I would say Spotify is number one. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. 
Okay, um, perfect. Um, my final topic, guys, is going to be on branding and promotion for the podcast. Um, I would say straight up when it comes to your branding um, and, you know, trying to start to, you know, have a bit of fun with it, um, you know, be creative. Um, and, you know, not everyone here is a graphic designer. So uh, I, I wonder how many times Canva actually gets recommended during these lunch and learns. Um, but graphic design uh, for non-graphic designers is Canva. So when you're creating uh, designs for your podcast, you're going to be looking at three main posts. You're going to have your logo, uh, your cover art, um, and your episode guest graphics. Um, and I'll show you my variations in a bit. Um, but when it comes to the branding, just use Canva. Um, now, there are a lot of freelance graphic designers in Cork City. Um, if it's something kind of, it's the once-off payment, you want something that really stands out, absolutely, don't be afraid to reach out to someone. Um, but Canva is a good place for you to start. Um, my notes when it comes to kind of, I suppose, the branding for your podcast, I'd say be, stre be smart, strategic, and consistent, and try and tie it back into the topic and title and consider the tone of your podcast. Um, so I guess a lot of time branding, I, I, you know, I did marketing in f for four years in CIT or MTU, so I'm not going to go on a rant now about marketing. Um, but I always like to say when it comes to your brand, what people say behind your back, what people say about your company when you're not there or when you're not tagged in the post, that's the most important thing. You know, so the style, type, the typography, the tone, uh, all that in the branding and design. Um, I, I don't know. I suppose, I've, again, I've done marketing for the last four or five years now. So some people who might not be from a marketing background, I hope this makes sense. Um, but I'll show you some good examples as well from my own podcasts in terms of how I try and like tie in bits of consistency. And that's done through color, the same font, smart little cues like that. Um, I think for those of you who um, want to start a podcast and don't have experience in branding, um, or I guess graphic design at least, Graph design is a lot like problem solving. Um, you've got a number of factors that you have to get in to that episode graphic. You want to get in your, your podcast logo. You're going to want to get in your company logo, perhaps your host name, the episode topic. Now, in recent times, I've stopped putting the Spotify and the Apple uh, logo into my podcast because I think it's built up enough awareness now that people just know and expect it to be on Spotify. Um, I think as well, if, if enough people or if everyone knew out there that it's like 100% free to get your podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, we'd never have to show where you can listen to it because it's just a given. Um, and what I want to do now is basically show you variants of my own podcast, um, straight up the A to B podcast branding. Um, your first designs are going to be the logo, the cover art and the episode covers. Um, and like I said earlier on, I don't do the Spotify and Apple anymore. People just know where it is. And also the majority of my traffic actually comes across from social media. So they'll click in the link on Twitter or uh, Instagram or Facebook, whatever it might be. And then they'll select, so I have a link tree. And it's like, do you want to listen to Spotify or an, an Apple podcast? And I think even then around 80% of people click straight on Spotify. Um, so yeah, straight off, you're going to need a, like a profile or a logo for your uh, podcast. You're going to need like uh, the cover art, which will appear on all of the streaming platforms. And then when you announce a new episode, you're going to want a graphic. Now, it kind of has to be the same graphic so people know what podcast it is. Um, but you can play around with it and you can, you know, play around with the different brand elements. Um, I think just for, because when you're trying to talk about design, design's a very visual thing. It's also a very subjective thing. So I have two podcasts that I do not know if I'll ever get to work on uh, because I'm a bit busy right now. Um, but the Marketing Graduate podcast, um, it's the same thing here. The cover art in the middle, that's not me, but I would have to pose similarly for the shot. Um, and it's those small kind of cues or small notes that, you know, make a brand in my opinion. Um, but straight up again, you've got your, you, you've got your logo, you've got your cover art, and then you've got your guest um, art. Um, and another podcast I was in the works on, uh, which was uh, probably my proudest bit of branding, the video game marketing show. Um, and again, it's just consistency in branding. You can move uh, like the VGM show there or like the, the picture of the people or even like the, the little designs in the top left and the top right. You can move those around. But as long as those cues are still in the branding, people will know. Whether it's you look at the A to B podcast and how I have the blueprint in the background. That blueprint is like the design of life, the design of the A to B story, how someone's career was designed. They designed it themselves, you know. The green brick wall, not too sure. I don't really have a cool story for that one. I was just like, 
yeah, green brick, that looks cool. I'll fire that into the back. Um, that was very much it there. Um, and then the VGM show, um, variants, uh, are they variants? No, gradients. Gradients were something I wanted to play around with a while. Um, they're just, they make everything pop so much more. They look really cool. Um, so yeah, again, when it comes to a brand, to be honest, guys, just go on to Apple Podcasts, look through all the different podcasts that are out there. Um, you know, I think marketing and, and branding is a lot of taking other ideas and just making them better or making them your own. Um, I'm not a graphic designer by trade, you know, um, or by whatever, you know, I, I just, I look at what I like and I take that and I try to come up with my own variation. Um, when it comes to actual promotion, I would say, and like promotion isn't going to be the same for everyone. It's going to be what's your objective, you know, like I personally, for me, I don't care about my numbers. I'm just happy podcasting. I'm happy having conversations with people. I'm happy taking somebody um, and doing an hour long show with them and telling the story of their career and how they got from A to B. So I'd say tailor your podcast around your time and your goals, especially if you're the sole producer. If you're not the sole producer, you have a co-host or you have someone that's going to work with you, it treat a startup or treat a podcast like a startup, you know, like it needs to have, you, you need to have meetings. You need to be able to like have a plan and say like, we need to get uh, so many episodes done before, you know, this date, or, you know, we need to get all these graphics ready, or we need to get all the co all the copy for the socials ready, whatever it is. Um, like I used Excel for everything. I used to plan every single episode. I put in the date I was going to record, whether I edited, um, you know, if I'd sent out the email, uh, if the person had signed on or not, when like, the first date would be that they said they'd uh, do the recording and I'd have a second date in case they had to change their minds. Um, but yeah, it, just know what your objective is. If it's a podcast you want to put out there just because you want to have a podcast, um, do it. But if you're expecting, you know, like a return on it, just make sure like, what is your goal? What is your aim? Um, promotion and where I'd say, where is your audience? Um, I think we see the posts all the time that your, you know, your brand doesn't have to be active on every single social media page. Like some of them just aren't going to work for you. Um, I know if I was ever brought into a job for uh, marketing and I was asked to use Facebook, I immediately saw her. I, I don't think I've used Facebook in about two years now. Um, and I just a part of me that I'd love to be able to get the podcast up there and show a family back home. Oh, this is my podcast, but just, that's not my audience. Um, you know, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, that's where I go. Um, content is king. They're really good. Again, they've such a strong focus on video. So when it comes to Instagram, they've got their IGTV and Instagram reels, and then they can repurpose that on TikTok. Um, but really, I, I wouldn't worry too much um, when it comes to, to whether or not you should be on TikTok with your podcast. Like if you can repurpose video first, go ahead. Um Promotion in terms of how, um, I would say if you're going to stick with graphic and graphic only, um, it's good. Um, it definitely won't be as eye-catching as video or audio. Um, when you've got the Canva, it, again, you can create graphics just basically to say new episode is out. This is the topic we're talking about. This is the person we have on. Um, and headliner, which is here on the right, that little H symbol. Um, that is a tool I really wanted to show today, um, but putting my slides into Google uh, Slides, I wasn't able to show an actual video. But if you have a look at the socials for the A to B podcast, um, you'll see on the left, um, that's my guest announcement. Um, but on the right, I got my audio snippets. So um, Headliner is the tool that I use for audio snippets. Um, and I really wish I had more time to kind of run through it today. Um, but if anyone is interested, and again, have a look at the socials, have a look at how I do those videos. And if it's something you're interested in, straight up, just have a look at Headliner. If you're having any uh, issues uh, around using it, give me a text on LinkedIn and Instagram. Like I said, I'm more than happy to help people who are trying to start a podcast. Um, you know, it's a really cool space to be in. Um, but yeah, uh, again, if your guests don't want to be in video, if you yourself are a bit afraid to go onto video, um, you know, you can still have audio snippets come out. Um, and on the right, I'll try to explain it. I won't be really able to explain it. Um, but that graphic you see there with Katrina Heaslip and the A2B podcast, the top right and the, you know, season two, episode four, that's all static. That's just a graphic that I made up on Canva. And then I purposely leave the top left up here. I leave that blank. In fact, I play around with the blueprint graphic, which is at the back of all the posts, and I expand that so I can get a space in there. So you can see here the subtitles at the top left are, it was so hands-on, um, and that's Katrina talking about her placement uh, during college. It's what helped her realize, like, you know, she really loved her career up until that point. 
she wasn't sure whether or not commerce was for her, but doing industry placement made her realize it was. Um, and through Headliner, you can basically produce audio snippets repurposed into graphic format. Um, a quick one on uh, Headliner, uh, it's like eight euros a month. That's what I use. Um, it's You get 10 videos per month. Uh, again, it depends on your objective. Um, you can get unlimited videos for, I think, like 25 euros a month. Um, but I'm far too poor for that. So uh, I stick with just um, the eight euro one a month. Um, and that gives you 10 videos that you can basically take your podcast audio. You can take from, I think it's like from literally nodding up to 10 minutes. I try to stick it around 60 seconds, take a certain snippet from the episode, repurpose it into headliner um, and download it, put it out on all your socials. And now not only are you a podcaster, but you're also sharing video of you talking and asking your guests questions or talking about a specific topic across your socials. Um, I guess coming towards the end, um, here's a receipt. Isn't this a cool little graphic? I thought this was class. Um, planning and producing your podcast is going to cost you nothing. Episode and topic ideation is going to cost you nothing. The recording software, it'll cost you nothing. Editing, it's going to cost you nothing. Your podcast and your branding, nothing. And promotion, it's going to cost you nothing. The only thing you should really spend good money on is a decent microphone. And like I said, if you have like a MacBook and if you have Apple ear, uh, phones or earpods, AirPods, I don't even know, earbuds, you don't even need to buy a mic, you know? Use Zincaster, test your audio today. This sounds like an ad right now. It's not. And don't forget, you can get 10% off of Republic of Work. But uh, go on to Zincaster, record your audio, see if it works, just see what it's like. Um, it is really good quality. Um, and then headliner fees, that's a monthly reoccurring thing at like 10 euros a month. That's what comes out of my bank account. For me to be able to put video on social and to promote each uh, episode, um, it's worth it. Um, and yeah. I think it's like five to now. So uh, end of presentation. Any more questions? Uh, my socials are on the left, guys. And again, I'm happy to stay here for as long as I can answering your questions. Um, but if anyone wants to ask a question uh, now or uh, with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever, please uh, shoot. Um, that's brilliant, Jack. Thank you so much. Um, we just have a few questions in the chat box, so I'll call them out to you there. So I think you might have answered this one, but how long is your snippet? Um, so it depends uh, if your snippets go on to Instagram as a post they have to be less than a minute so you have to uh, I, I, what I do is I listen back to my podcasts after they come out um, and if I find them talking about something really interesting I'll go into the notes of my iPhone and I'll say Neville was talking about traveling Asia from 23 minutes and 11 seconds um, I listen to that um, sometimes it might go to like 70, 80 seconds and I just have to decide where I can cut that off early now that's just for Instagram IGTV allows you to put up up to like maybe 10 minutes, maybe even more now. It'll, you can certainly go past 60 seconds. Uh, stories, again, that's 60 seconds. But if you play around with it, again, like a story really shouldn't be more than 60 seconds unless it's video or unless you're talking about like a really special topic. Twitter, um, there's no real, I think it's like maybe three minutes there. Um, but the snippets are up to you entirely. Just make sure that like if you say uh, so-and-so talking about this certain topic, like the snippet can't be just like a five minute thing from your show that has, you know, nothing to do with it. Again, think of the objective. Why am I putting this out there? What am I trying to get across? What's the return on this? Or just why would someone listen to this? You know, it's try and get something short and catchy across. It's a snippet for a reason. Thank you. And then we also have, um, how did you identify who you wanted to interview? Um, it's a good question. Um, for me, I started in, I was in my final year of college um, and I just knew I wanted to interview people who had come out of CIT and who had successful careers. Um, and I was like, you know, how can I basically do that? So I, I used LinkedIn. LinkedIn was my, was my most powerful tool. Um, if you like what I would do a lot was um, I'd go into the, the alumni search for the different colleges and I could like see, I could type in uh, Munster Technological University and then I would say, Netflix, just to see if anybody from MTU was working at Netflix. They weren't. Uh, um, but I, I would try LinkedIn or I would try HubSpot and I would get all these people, um, you know, or even just like through your connections, who you're following on LinkedIn or Twitter, I would come across people. I'd be like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. And I just reach out to them. Um, I'd put a wish list together. I, I, I have a season three now I, I'm working on. I think I have 50 people on that wish list. So I have to cut that down to maybe 12, 15. Um, 
But yeah, you'll find people out there. Just use your connections um, and yeah, just add them to the list. Thank you. And also Todd wants to know, with the free software, are you bombarded with ads? No, I am not anyway. Um, I suppose, yeah, it's certainly not for email. Um, and I suppose that free software when you're actually using it, I think I understand now like banner ads and stuff. No, like that's the thing. Podcasting is so easy. Um, and all these software, they're all free. Um, and I've had no issues. There's no ads. Like it all sounds too good to be true, but it is 100% true and 100% free. Fantastic. And last question is headline. Oh yeah. Headliner generates subtitles, does it? That's from James. And as far as I understand. Uh, yeah, it does. Um, now, the, the funny thing about Headliner is they're an, an American company. So if I have like an American on talking about marketing, Headliner has an, it, Headliner's perfect. But recently I interviewed Neville O'Donoghue, who is from Yall, um, and Headliner hadn't a clue what he was saying. Uh, so it tried its very, very best. It, it was funny to go back and edit uh, what they were trying to interpret, uh, this, this Yall man, or what he was trying to say. But I had to go back um, and... Like it, the, the transcription, it'll take like the first five seconds and what Neville said in those five seconds, it'll transcript it. Um, and I would have to go back in then and change a couple of words that they thought were something else, but were just outlandishly wild. Thank you very much. And also Carmel said, thank you. It's a really great session with really good tips for someone starting up. And there's a thanks from James. There's there's nice thank yous in the chat box. <laughs> I, 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 yes. <laughs> That's thank perfect. you everyone for joining. So we'll include um, Jack's details as well in our follow-up emails. So if you do want to reach out to him there and ask him any questions, you can. And we'll also have a, a link to get in touch with us for the discount on the podcast studio. Uh, so if anyone has any more questions, now is, now is your time. Absolutely. Um, and again, if not today, guys, again, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter. Uh, it's all at it's Jack Foley. So just don't be afraid to shoot me a text on there also.